the thing I'm really kind of excited about in the sport as it's growing forward now is there's just a clear route to get anyone, you know, anyone at home kind of getting into strongman can, you know, sign up to official strongman. Mm-hmm. They can do the qualifiers. They could do you know, the England's qualifier, for example. And then suddenly they're at, a Brit- you know, they're at Britain's yeah. Yeah, the strongest man and, and compete to get a world. One of the toughest strongmen in history, right here. Not a political test, it's a strongman. Hi guys, welcome to the Giants Live podcast. I'm here with Adam Bishop and Rob Frampton, and we're going to talk about uh, finishing off 2023 and, and moving forward to 24, and what, uh, what Adam and Rob have got planned. So we'll uh, start off, Adam. Um, Britain's Strongest Man coming up in January. Yeah. How are you feeling? Feeling good? Yeah, good. I mean, it's kind of, uh, it's come around quick again. You know, it was only a couple of weeks ago we were watching 2023 on the TV and now suddenly we're getting ready we're two weeks away or just under to, to actually do Britain's Strongest Man again. Yeah, yeah. A, a proper stacked lineup. I don't think we've ever had a, a lineup like this. Where, Unbelievable. Yeah, you know, everyone has, you know, qualified rightly and, and they've come through. We've got some in- incredible athletes. I don't think there's any kind of guys who are kind of just making up the numbers. I think everyone's here to to do yeah. do some damage. Yeah, I think that's the beauty about. I mean, obviously you've got you've got the form horses like yourself and Tom and yeah, you know Luke Richardson and and, and Luke Stoltman and you know Felix and people yeah. like that. But the thing is about having a qualifying system, we're getting the best of the rest as well. You know, in Wales and Scotland and Ireland and everything like that. So there's a couple of newbies coming through. Which yeah, be quite interesting. Some really exciting newbies coming through. Obviously, you've got Paddy, Paddy Hayes coming through. Um, King. Yeah, Sean, Sean Gillen as well. I'm excited to see him compete. Yeah. I've not seen anything of him. Obviously, he won the uh, the Ireland qualifier. Um, you know, so I think we've got some some really good talent in the in the, the British Isles at the moment, and I think it's going to be uh, going to be one hell of a show. And with the events as they are, I don't think it kind of suits anyone to a complete standout. I think people have got good events, they've got some bad events, so it's going to be a really interesting mix. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I think with the the extra people in it, the new guys and uh, the the new events is going to completely. Uh, um, I would say it would, it would change the the, the Brits because Brits has always been amazing, but I think it's going to definitely put the cat amongst the pigeons with new guys and new events. So people that don't know the events, um, obviously we've got a couple of new things in there. We've got um, we've got a few standard things mm-hmm. in there like Atlas Stones. We've got the uh, sack toss again, same as last time, which Flowers did brilliant on last time. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, I think he got the fastest we've ever had <laughs> on that particular piece of apparatus. We have a carry and hoist. So you'll be carrying an anvil 20 metres and hoisting that up in the air. Oh, wow. That'll be interesting. Yeah. Um, what else have we got? We've got... A- axle press for reps. Axle press for reps. Heavy. 360, uh, 160, sorry, which uh, I think we haven't done that for a little while. It'll be interesting to see... How the guys go? I know it's not everyone's favourite because it's a tough no. one. <laughs> always is. Axles are always a, a real tricky one technically, as well as um, why well, the weight. You know, it's it's, it's one of get that transition up to the shoulder is always going to be the the catalyst to get a good press, isn't it? Well, I know we've only got up ten kilos because usually standard it's it's around the one fifty mark, one sixty. It looks like it's making a big difference in the guys training actually. Yeah. Yeah, uh, ten kilos on that is a fair yeah. old whack, isn't it? And it'll be the the, the solid bar as well, won't it? With the solid with the wheels. solid wheels. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a game changer. Uh, and again, some people like Par, for instance, very good at that. Mm. Whereas his log recently hasn't been fantastic. No. But with him being quite fast, he's, he yeah. tends to jump under it. And yeah. you know, Tom Tom's a great axle presser. Yeah, Tom, yeah. Tom's probably yeah you know, on on paper is probably the strongest axle presser there. Yeah, um, yeah. With some of the stuff he's done, uh, but with an axle press for reps as well, there's only a certain number of reps you can do in the allotted time. Mm. So it makes it a little bit different than say like a log press. Like you know, with log press reps, you see guys smashing out you know eight nine, ten reps in kind of 75 seconds. But with an axle, it just takes a little bit longer to get yeah. it in position each yeah. time. So it does kind of, I'm not going to say level it up, but make the make the result a little bit uh, harder to predict. Do you not think as well with an axle press, there's a lot more room for messing up? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know? Definitely. Sort of fumble factor. Mm. I think a lot with this show because you're going to have keg toss, which you can be the best keg to- no, sack toss, sorry. You can be the best in the world mm. and mess it up once you miss one. Yeah, and then also with the carry and hoist, mm. you know, there's a lot of sort of factors in oh, there. Yeah. Well, it's completely that, that event's completely unknown to us. You know, none of us yeah. have have seen it. We don't know what it's going to feel like. You know, it's it's a completely new event for Giants Live, and it's not something that any of us have kind of done 
um, directly with this this new equipment. So that's a, a real kind of interesting one to see who adapts the quickest on the day, yeah. really, see so who gets used to it quick uh, and see who he kind of really suits. So sort of looking back at, at 23, obviously you're, you know, Britain's strongest man, um, which was a great lineup. you know what I mean? Not yeah. taking anything away from what you did because you had a, you know, you had Hicksie and you had, you had Gav and some great guys there. Um, Parr who came second, I think, the year before. Yeah. In it. But this year, obviously, you've got Luke and Tom back. Um, Luke Richardson training for it as well. Um, like I say, a couple of new guys are looking promising. You know, obviously, there is a couple of people with a lot of talent in there that weren't there last year. How are you feeling about that? I mean, I know you can only go perform how you perform, but how are you feeling about those guys coming back? Yeah, I mean, look, 2023, I mean, I won four out of the five events. So, you know, in my books, it was a pretty dominant performance yeah. from from my point of view you know but you can only beat who's out in front of you yeah exactly um, yeah. and and regardless of that i think it's this competition could come down to who puts in a solid performance and who doesn't make any mistakes you know like i i can't control what kind of shape tom turns up in when tom's on his day i think he's he's close to impossible to beat yeah i agree um you know he's an unbelievable athlete um but all i can go and do is do you know, the set number of reps I want to do on the deadlift, on the axle, you know, on the the, the, the times I want to do on the stones and the throw, you know, and then see where that stacks up at the end. That's all you can really do in this game. You can't really fixate too much on trying to beat individual athletes because yeah. that's when it falls apart. Because you forget about someone else in the lineup who's coming up fast. Yeah, definitely. And and, and I think it would be one of those shows where certain people that might not win the show will take points. They will. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. And I, and I think obviously, <laughs> like, you know, let's be, let's be honest, Tom is... Whether you're at World's Strongest Man, Britain's Strongest Man, Europe's Strongest Man, or a Shaw Classic, or you're Rogue, Tom's d dangerous. Yeah. It's, it's about as dangerous as it comes. Yeah. But you beat him before in recent years. You know yeah. what I mean? You beat him at Britain's, what was it? 2020, yeah. yeah. So, you know, there's a bit of confidence there. Um, and again, events. I, I don't think they're bad events for Tom, because no. I don't think Tom's got bad events. No. But, you know, again, there are events that people can go wrong on. Yeah. Like you say, is those, is those the tiny little second changes, different bits. Like you say, with um, you know moving from the the anvil carry into the into the hoist, those simple little implements. Like you say, you're going to lose time. And yeah. like was with the with the a bag toss. Like I say you get one bag just just out of line or just out of place. It it, it almost like as a domino effect for the for the next two or three. So I think you have to be you know switched on, but also. Um, relaxed in a way yeah. it's what uh, uh bish and i talk about a lot is giving it full beans and explosive or or in a with a compound lift absolutely full power but also calm as well so before we're nice and calm and then we explode through into its the moving events but also with the dynamic of with a compound lift to be calm before then we lift and then we're okay because you need to have that that balance of of pure explosion and, and aggression through the lift, but also that calmness before and after. You and can't keep yourself in that crazy place. No, you can't. can't no. Like, that's that's where you'll general. burn energy. And, and you'll, if you overthink things, that, that's it. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what we're really trying to strive for, aren't we? So one one event that is a little bit different, I sort of dreamed up, that I'm hoping it's going to go well, is a deadlift. So just to explain to people at home, we're going to have two bars, uh, one with 350 and one with 400. So... You can obviously every every rep on three hundred on the deadlift. Yeah, uh, every rep on 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 four hundred. Sorry, beats the three fifty. Fantastic yeah. idea. Yeah. Um. So people who can't do four hundred will just rep on three fifty. Mm. If you do rep on four hundred, you can go back and rep on three fifty. So let's right. say, you know, if me and you both get two on four hundred, but I do an extra one on three fifty. Right. I beat you. So it's an interesting. Mm -hmm. Concept, yeah, really. it's a pretty epic drop set. Isn't it go, for, yeah. yeah. Your drop set, what you've done in the gym, you're gonna do 400 for reps on deadlift, and I go do a yeah. drop set back down to 350 straight yeah, away. It's pretty grueling. I think, I think dropping down to 350 is still gonna feel horrible. Oh, yeah. good grief, yeah, no, yeah. Well, just because it's 50 kilos lighter, yeah, it's still gonna feel horrible. But I think it just gives I, th I feel a lot of people might do one or two on 400, yeah, and I think then if they can fight it out on 350, I think that'll split it up a little yeah. bit. So, I think with this. It's a bit more of a thinking man's deadlift. Mm. I think if you, if you if you Very get true. it right, mm. you know, yeah. Because if you try and do too many on four hundred and you can't pull the three fifty, yeah, you know. But then there'll be certain people that I think will just go for it on four hundred. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean that. that obviously, I'm going to be doing the four hundred and and looking to pull whatever reps I need to. Yeah. You know, obviously, the deadlift's a great event for me, but 
you know, you would might... you drop back to the 350 though? Only if I need to. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I won't want to be jumping back there and doing as you know. Hopefully, it'll be a case of just need to pick up one or two uh, if people do tie me. But yeah, I'm, I'm confident in my deadlift abilities with the the 400 for reps. Yeah. That yeah, it should be a, a good good event. For me. What do you think is a good number uh, on that? I mean, I know five is a really good number. That's five is fantastic. Yeah. If anyone gets three on the four hundred, that's a big, that's a yeah. big pull. Yeah. You know, that's a, yeah. that's a, some really good deadlifting. Three at four hundred uh, on the reps. You know, four is is fantastic. Five is obviously around world record, world record area, area, area. Yeah. So I think six is maybe unofficial. I know Heinler got that, didn't he? Yeah. So when I, when I did the six reps um, during the, um, the the COVID period, we were yeah. doing a lot of stuff at home and everything, uh, which was unreal to watch. Um, but I think, yeah, still in competition. I think it's still shared by three men. I think. I think is it not Benny, JF Caron, and Janashia? Yeah, I, so, I mean, yeah. JF Caron and Janashia did it at Manchester one year at the yeah. World Deadlift Championships, and Benny did it. I'm not sure Benny was in competition either, yeah. to be honest with yeah. you. But uh, yeah, I mean, five is massive. Huge. You know, if anyone can get five, huge. Really, yeah, run away with it, really. Which we'll see. But it's great that you can actually nominate and also go back if you wish exactly yeah so if you've only got one on four and you think well yeah. i wanted more than that yeah at least you can rep on the 350 try and beat all the guys on there and i think it will separate guys because a lot of these times if you do a really heavy for reps event you know they um they tend to get a lot of guys on the same reps yeah but with this one we're going to separate with some some lighter reps as well maybe so yeah, yeah it should split the points a bit It'd better be interesting yeah It'd be interesting definitely especially where i could i'd imagine Maybe eighty percent of the guys that could be in a, will get one on the four hundred. Yeah. So to be able to go back onto the three fifty, it will be a and battle it out. Yeah, definitely. I think that that will be a game changer. I think if you got one on on the four hundred and and two or three on the three fifty, mm. it'd be a good result. I'll get you up in yeah, more. Yeah, yeah it'd be good. It'd yeah. be exciting to see. Really good. And like I say, it's a thinking man's um, event. So definitely, yeah, definitely. Very smart. Yeah, nice. So yeah, a couple of weeks left until that. Prep's all gone well for you. It's been brilliant. Yeah, the nice little off season. Kind of did. Did some lighter training, gave my body a bit of a rest at the back end of the year. So I was just starting to pick up some injuries at the back end of uh, 2023. Uh, and then, yeah, feeling really good. Everything's kind of just gone gone smoothly in training. So cool. Excited to just get it done. Yeah. And what else you got planned for this year? So obviously we've got Worlds. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be at Europe's because uh, my, my wife Amy is running a marathon out in Boston. So I'll be out <laughs> supporting her. Um, but then I haven't actually thought past that. You know, I'll, I'll jump into another couple of couple of shows. Yeah. Um, Obviously, the you know the the big big announcement this year is obviously we're going back out to Vegas to do the deadlift champs, which is like I'd love to be involved in. Obviously, you know I love a deadlift, um, and I love Vegas, so that could be a perfect. That could be great. Perfect. We'll have to see the invites are going out soon, so yeah, be good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What a spectacular place to have a a deadlift uh, competition in Vegas! Like the craziness of the deadlift that we've all been chasing for years and years to be in possibly one of the most craziest out there cities. On, on the planet, the yeah. Vegas is just... Uh, it's, it's unreal. I mean, you know, we think about where this all kind of started. I know we talk to always all the time with, you know, Giants Live and where it started in kind of like, you know, a, a car park. And now suddenly we're booking mm. uh, venues and, you know, athletes are going to be deadlifting out in Vegas. And I know the American scene is going to really appreciate it because the guys over there have been really kind of calling for a, a Giants Live yeah, over I mean, there for a while. we've done a few out there over the years, but never uh, the recent um, standard that we do shows that. We haven't done anything like this. So no. now really, uh, if if there is a Giants Live, no matter where it is in the world, it's got to be of the same standard as the UK. So what, what they can expect in America is they're going to get exactly the same, the same commentators, mm -hmm. the same standard of live stream, filming, obviously the, the high standard of athletes. Mm -hmm. But I thought putting the deadlift out uh, really sort of, says we're coming we're coming to do business out here, you know what I mean? Yeah, fantastic. Um, and, and obviously... What's been really nice is how the athletes have got excited about it, yeah, which yeah. is what I wanted. Yes, yeah. we want them to get ready for it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Really. Yeah, they're all excited, aren't they? You can see yeah. on the, you know, the social media being as it is. There's, there's a huge, you know, uh, excitement for the for the Den of Champs, not only as a competition but also out in Vegas. It should be it'll be crazy. Yeah, so good. Yeah, and while while Cardiff might be the Vegas of of South South Wales, I don't think it really kind of competes, does it? You know, <laughs> like that's it. To the uh, to the uh, the real deal out there. Well, we've got the World Long Lift Championships. That's going to be in Birmingham at the Open. That's that's another new another new new venue for us. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to be pretty cool. So we've got quite a big year planned next year. All the official strongman games in Europe and course, in yeah. America. Um, Britain's strongest woman, England's strongest man, and then all the usual venues as well. Mm. Sheffield, Leeds, uh, Glasgow. Everything still. The carries thing, on with that the thing i'm really kind of excited about in the sport as it's growing forward now is there's just a clear route 
to get anyone, you know, anyone at home kind of getting into strongman can, you know, sign up to official strongman. Mm-hmm. They can do the qualifiers. They could do you know, the England's qualifier, for example. And then suddenly they're at a Brit, you know, they're at Britain's yeah. Yeah, the strongest mean- man and, and compete to get a world. So I think that's the really nice thing we haven't really had in the sport, you know, in the past. Uh, especially even when I was coming up, I would have loved the opportunity just yeah. to have that set route. And I think, you know, it just opens the sport up to, to absolutely everyone, anyone. I and mean, we'll get better talent into the sport that way. Years ago, you almost had to be lucky to get in front of the right people to, to do, once you were in, yeah. you you were, you were in and that was it. But uh, now, I mean, we actually talked about it last night. In the final of World's Strongest Man last year, there were six people that had come through official Strongman Games in recent yeah, years. Yeah, it was, yeah, you're right. You know, which wow, that's fantastic, isn't it? Massive. So which shows it's working. It is working, yeah. And two of them in the final mm. only qualified in 20, well, the 2023 game, mm. the end of 22, mm. which qualified them for 23. Yeah. So awesome. within a year, they've gone from a few strongman games to the final world's strongest man. There you go. So it proves that the feeder system, mm. yeah. because the, the, the well, all the categories at official strongman games are hard. Don't get me wrong. Mm. And they do find the right person, whether it's yeah. world's strongest woman, world's strongest man. But it just shows that how hard that final is, because we took the top three from there, which was uh, Jacko Schoonwinkle, it was uh, Spencer Remick, and uh, Matt Rag. Right, yeah. yeah. And look how well they all did. Fantastic. So you imagine like that final just at OSG, which was almost classed as an amateur show, let's mm. be honest. Mm. It's not classed as a top show. No, not really. Because it's a qualifier. Yeah. Um, well, those guys, are all around top ten in the world now. Mm. Even Spencer's just scraping yeah. on the outside of it. Yeah, you know. So it's like, how hard is that final yeah. now? Fantastic. It's mental, really. Wow. So there's a lot of guys that if they got put into that now, pro strong men, they would struggle. They would, yeah, yeah. Because it's fast paced as always, and it's yeah. yeah good events. But like, well, I, I think what you've got there uh, at OSG is you've got the hunger. Yeah. You've got people are really hungry because them. Them had a chance oh, to exactly. be a world's strongest man or mm. or a giant's live or a short classic or a rogue mm. so they're seeing that top three opportunity and mm. really going for it mm. yeah i mean it's also picking the right people because so you say that 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 kind of success rate with people going through osg and then getting to the final of worlds means that the tests you guys are doing at osg are correct to pick the right people who are going to be yeah, competitive right. in giants live and at, at world's strongest mm. man well the good thing is about it is i mean it doesn't matter who you know or or what equipment you've got or you passed. You can just do an online qualifier to get yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah. And if you once you're there, yes, you're in a lot of people, probably mm. about five hundred people. But mm. you know, if you're good enough, you always yeah you're gonna win it out. You know, so yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, that's, yeah. No, that's so, a good way of doing it. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, so it's good stuff. Good stuff. So we've got that planned again next year. Um, yeah, and just uh, just carrying on really, just carrying on. Keep, you, keep. Every year, I think you've you've upped the dates and the, and the amount of venues you're doing each year, isn't it? So it, it, you can see how, how popular it is and how much it's climbing because the amount of work you're doing, not just at the at the stadiums and at where you're in, but also in house at Giants and what, yourself and all the guys that you're doing. It, you're, you're non-stop with setting different venues, doing different places. I know we've chatted constantly well last year about where you were off to and what you were doing, getting these lovely venues to keep the keep the the flame of giants going with all, yeah, all the other competitions. It's, it's difficult because there's like a correlation between not growing too fast and keeping mm. the quality. Because I could go book loads of arenas and and do a bad job. Mm. Whereas if you can just grow s- generically, yeah, I think that's, that's the why. crowds will fill and exactly. they'll come. Um, and and you've got to do a good job because yeah. then oh, you're going to lose lose <laughs> the customer if you like and the mm. fan base. So it's keeping that live stream quality, keeping the athletes fit as well. Mm. Which we obviously we're trying not to, not to kill you guys off as well, you know. <laughs> so yeah, um, so one th- one we had a few questions. Um, one of the, one of the fans pointed out actually on the questions um, about how little people have actually won Britain's Strongest Man more than twice, basically. Oh yeah, there's not many people. Yeah. No, no. So um, you've got Glenn Ross won it three times. I'm looking at the board over there. You've got Jeff Capes won it three times. Yeah. Jamie Reeves four times. And Eddie Hall five times on the trot actually. Yeah. Um. So so you could this time, or either you or Tom, yeah, could join the club of yeah, yeah three times. Ranks, mate. I mean, that's a pretty crazy group of athletes yeah, there. You know? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Obviously, definitely. with three world strongest man winners, uh, and obviously Glenn himself, like yeah, you know, that's a that's a bonkers bonkers group to to get into. I think it, it does show the, the the strength and depth we've always had in in Britain for strongman, but I mean now even more so, you know, because. It's 
it's definitely like we keep saying the lineup of this show is very deep it's not a two horse race in any way shape or form you know the guys are all really good so yeah it's going to be a one one hell of a battle between all of us i think and i do honestly think as well and and this is no disrespect to anybody that's only won a title once if you can win a title two or three times you know you can have a really good day or you can have a really bad day you can have a good day and then other people have a bad day and you win a title mm. yeah which is still great and i wouldn't yeah. take that away for anybody but if you win something two or three or four times yeah you really are. Yeah, you got to be doing something right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really are sort of mm. uh, stamping your authority yeah. down on it. Yeah. So it's it's going to be interesting. <laughs> um. So we had a few questions as well. Unless Rob, have you got any questions? Have you got anything you want to say? I think it's exciting to see the changes and the transitions of strongman. I also think it's great that um, we see these new guys coming through. Like, like what we were saying with the um, with the OSG pathway, and it's working. We can see that from World Strongest Man. Um, and also from my first ever time of sitting in the crowd when I came and watched teams um, in um, was it November? Yeah, it was teams. Yeah. yeah, my first ever viewing of Giants so I've in because I've either uh, competed or been backstage with Bish or, or, or yourself um, helping and stuff or refereeing. For me to actually sit with the, with the fans and and feel the vibrancy and the electricity of, of what they're they're watching, it is, was was made it all more. Uh, amazing for me but you're seeing almost like the other side of the coin seeing how excited they get with their with their their favorites you know cheering them on and and from the start to finish and, and knowing obviously the backstory of how things are set up and how the athletes are feeling and and what they're doing but seeing it from the fan perspective was such a, a refreshing thing to see but also very um almost humbling in a way to see how uh, excited and how much they feel for their athletes and how much they they get they get absorbed into the show. It, it was it was uh, amazing. Absolutely well, the one beautiful. thing I've noticed in recent years, the fan base is growing massively, and I speak to a, a lot of the fans that aren't like haven't been fans for twenty years. Mm. So we, so because it's grown, we're getting new fans coming into it, and or or like I might have given someone some tickets or it's someone's brother or sister mm. who comes who've never been before and what amazes me is is they very quickly get a favorite you know like gav for instance yeah. everyone loves gav yeah. you know what i mean and it's like the the thing is with a football team or whatever or most of the sports you really need to know about a lot of things yeah, to make your judgment of yeah, what true. team you support or what person you support yeah Whereas with this, you can sit down and go, oh, he seems nice. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And then supporting him. Yeah. And that's what you tend to get. Yeah, people go, it. And it's not always the person who's winning. No. You know, Mark Felix, probably one of the pop most popular people we've got. Yeah. yeah. You know, and not not that I'm saying Mark doesn't win, but he's not the top guy. No. Either, you know what I mean? Such a character, such an amazing, good-spirited athlete. And he's humble. Yeah. And like Gav. Gav's just come up through again. Yeah. Such an amazing guy. But it just amazes me how people can just go, yeah, I like him and that's it. I'm a, I'm yeah. a him fan. Stuck to it, and I? I don't think you need to be. It's not always the guy who's winning who's got the most fans. Have you no, noticed no, this? No, no, yeah. You know, it's it's, it's a strange no. one, really. It's good though. I mean, yeah. That's all part of strongman. That's it. It's all part of a, a community with um, with having, having like you say having your favourites and stuff. So we we put a few questions out there online uh, for Bish. Uh, so Jordan asks. What is your favourite fish to catch? Oh, we got to the fishing straight away. Uh, I'm a carp angler, so I'm predominantly fishing for carp, which is a, one of the bigger kind of. Is that not the easiest one to catch as well? Though? No, it's not the easiest one to catch. I thought they were all just putting a big pond for you. Yeah, uh, that's well, that's uh, at picks. your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fish for your, your house. <laughs> yeah, more easy. And one gets many legs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> might, might actually feed out my hands. So yeah, just grab them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Leah asks, "What is your biggest competition in 2024?" I don't know what that means. Actual competition or competitor, but uh, well, to be, to be fair, I mean, I don't think we can look past Britain's strongest man. You know, it's the first show of the year, arguably one of the most important. Um, and like we said before, there's so many great athletes that everyone's a threat. And also, from from your guys' point of view, he's probably the most winnable. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah, yeah. You know, because you're on home turf, you don't have to travel. No, you know, there is only going to be twelve people in it. Yeah. So, and you've won it before. <laughs> I've won it before. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Uh, Joe asks, is your tricep fully healed now? Yes, yeah. I mean, it, it was a, a complex injury, a lot more complex than my bicep tear was. I mean, the bicep tear, I was back in kind of 12 weeks and it was back to normal. The tricep's been a little bit more complicated. And the tricep's the one where you, you got pulled over by the deadlift? Yeah, yeah. Thanks yeah. For that. yeah well, I stacked it and <laughs> decided to pull the the, te the uh, tendon off the bone. Is that uh, video online if anyone wants to see it? No, no I haven't released it yet. Oh, right. Right. But, I think uh, I've got not... a copy of it. I'm <laughs> <not sure. laughs> yeah, you'll probably post it up on the uh, Giants Live. 
it's like just before I go out for a deadlift, I imagine. <laughs> Yeah, on the on the back on the back screen. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but my tricep, and after. My tricep's feeling great. Uh, pressing's really kind of coming on now, so I'm, I'm I'm happy. Like it's it's one of those injuries that takes a long, long time. It can be very easy to get frustrated um, with it because it just doesn't feel normal. But it, it's it's improved drastically this prep for Brits. So I'm I'm very excited. And do you not find when you've got an injury? I don't think I don't think any. When you've had an operation, I don't think anything ever properly heals totally. No. But I think other things compensate, don't they? Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it is different, obviously. You've got this massive scar down my arm. And, you know, you, you tend to also, when you get back, I mean, I was back competing. Well, Britain's was only six months or five months post the surgery. Yeah. Um, so it was a very quick turnaround for me getting back for that show. And you tend to kind of compensate with different moves and stuff. So your techniques do change, but it's it's all manageable and yeah. you get back to normal, you know, the best you can. Amazing you how your body adapts to these things. Right, yeah. So, um, a question from Evan Singleton. I, I imagine this will be really insightful and uh, high brown. He just question. says, why so posh? I was just brought up properly, Evan, you know. I was brought up, I learned, learned well at school, you know. Learned well at school. <laughs> um, you know, I... I we we all can't be just obsessed with dinosaurs like a six year old child, can we? So you know, but you know, I, I try my best just to keep the uh, the standards high in, in today's society. Yeah, thanks for that question, Evan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so Daniel asks, um, will you ever attempt the five or five deadlift? I mean, if, if we go to Vegas, why not? You know, yeah, I, I mean, that. the deadlift's feeling really good. I've been putting a lot of raw recently without the suit and stuff. So you know, and it's probably the the, the strongest it's ever been. Uh, I feel like I've built the muscles in the right places. It's, it's going really well. So, yeah, never say never. I, I definitely would like to pull it. Uh, I think when I realised that you were in for getting up that way, and and it was actually a lift that you failed, but you pulled it so fast, and it was in Manchester when you pulled 475. Yeah. And you almost got it, and I don't think you even realised how quick. I think you, I think you were, you'd done your 1,000 pounds. Yeah. And then you tried it. It was it was tough though. I think if I'd skip because that was my fourth attempt. If I'd skipped yeah. another one of the lifts, you know, I think I would have been fresher for it. Um, but you get this, you know, that night was crazy with like seven guys. But if you just skipped a thousand, you'd have probably got four seven five. But the thing is, a thousand was such a big deal. Such you were never going to skip it. And when you when you hit that, we hit that thousand pound. That the adrenaline dump you get after it is huge. Yeah. It's then tough to try and get yourself back up to go mm. for another one. But so. the movement of the four seven five was it's massive. Fantastic. It was yeah. so quick. Yeah, I didn't quite lock it out. out. Just pulled it out of position, me out of position a little bit, and kind of buried me. Yeah, but, you know, yeah, like f a focus program, like focusing on the the five hundred five is something that yeah I want to want to do definitely before my time is up in strongman, and I don't think there's any better stage than going out to to Las Vegas and pulling it there. So Reed asks, what do you do to keep the fire alive, so to keep hungry for 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 competition, or is that an easy thing to do? I enjoy it. I, I enjoy strongman. You know, I, I I love it. You know, I I have in recent years tried to stay away from following it when I'm kind of at home and uh, you know like switching off. So I've managed to kind of get that balance quite well of turning my brain off from strongman when I'm at home and then when I'm training I'm I'm kind of on it. But I think it's just key you enjoy what you're doing. You know, and I I enjoy my training. I enjoy the process. So yeah, getting motivated is pretty easy. So this is the strength collective asks. If you could hold any record, what would it be? I think the deadlift personally is the the, the premier lift, isn't it? Yeah. You know, and that, that stood for so long now with you know Eddie's in competition for five hundred that you know it's going to be a big big deal when someone breaks that. Yeah, really yeah, big I think deal. It will, yeah. Um, so I think that that record is the the one that's still probably regarded as the highest in in strongman, maybe with the log as well. Um, I think there's a lot of records that are, aren't as important. If you know what I mean, yeah. and I'm not trying to, you know, there's no, certain things mean. where, you know, cow work world record, shield walk, yeah. Conan's wheel record, you know, it's, it just isn't quite as prestige as a log. I think log deadlift and possibly axle, axle, yeah, and, yeah. and squat, you know, yeah, good squat. Yeah. But I think I think bitch as well. A deadlift to be the owner of a of a world record deadlift is just is yeah. is that you know pinnacle. Well, it takes so, so you got to recruit so much of your body mm -hmm. to do it. I think there's no arguing that it's no. got to be. Yeah, it's fantastic. That that all log press, I think, for me. Yeah, yeah log's yeah. another cracker. Yeah, it's, it's a big one. Yeah, for sure. Um, question from Steve: Do you miss the Harlequins? I do. Yeah, I mean, I, I uh, obviously worked there for ten years, so it was a massive chunk of my life. They were a fantastic employer. Uh, got to work with a great bunch of guys there, uh, and you know, I'd, I'd go back and work there. 
you know, within a heartbeat, but it was just getting a little bit too hard to to do both. Um, you know, to to do both the the strong man to my full ability and and obviously work to my full ability at Quinns and yeah, fantastic uh, fantastic club and I appreciate everything they did for me when I was when I was there. You know, looking after me and letting me swan off to, yeah. for a week at a time to go compete the world. I remember when we used to train down at the facility. They, 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 they were it, always. Yeah. But you know, behind you and then let them let's have the full reign of the gym and yeah, that's it, yeah, and, uh, all the other bits. And they were a good, like you say, a good bunch of guys. You had quite mm. a few of them at the wedding as well, here. Did yeah, we had some of the guys there. But yeah, it was, uh, the, the rugby clubs are fantastic. It's it's tough to explain to a non-rugby person like what it's all about. You kind of see the the bravado and some of the other kind of stuff. Stuff, but it's, it really is like playing rugby is a brotherhood. You look yeah. out for each other. You make friends for life. You know they'll they'll message you if they need anything. I can message anyone if I need to. People I've played with for like ten years ago, and they're they're always there. So and it's the same in the professional club still. And also from from a point of view of being a strength and conditioning coach, being Britain's strongest man is pretty impressive. It's not bad, is you it? know, for what you're going to give back to them. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the boys loved it. I mean, when we won the Brits the first time round, you know, we came in on the Monday morning. We were in the meeting. We had like the highlight video going. Came in with a trophy. The boys are going mental. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was it was a, a pretty cool moment to share. That's with brilliant. Them. Yeah, that's brilliant. Cool. Right. Have we got any questions for Frampton? What do you reckon? Should we turn someone to Frampton? See where he's <laughs> at. So I know Rob. Rob, now you kind of focus has been on uh, been on arm wrestling. I am. Yeah. You know, it's like the natural progression for like a strong man to kind of move out there, maybe do a bit of grip, then move to the arm wrestling. But I see you do a lot of like wacky exercises. Is there any kind of exercise that you're kind of really pushing at the moment you think is a great movement for any kind of arm wrestlers out there so i think over the 20 odd years i did strongman we were always um dialed into pressing with a with a straight with a straight wrist and a straight hand because obviously with dumbbell and log and axle it's always you know either in that neutral position or straight position but always having that wrist and now everything revolves around a cranked wrist so i've tried to do things like um a lot, of, a lot of my back assistant stuff is always like you know low pulley rows and lap pull downs and, and dumbbell stuff rather than having a straight wrist now it's always, always cranked so that's been probably the biggest transition but um i think for anyone that's that's crazy enough or stupid enough to get into arm wrestling uh first of all welcome to the three months of sheer torture because it's it's all painful because it's all pretty much in your hand and your and your elbow wrist and stuff uh obviously laps and everything else but i think the the best thing is to it's, it's not just about the grip, but it's positioning on the table. So no matter what you do on your machines and other bits and pieces, it's getting that height of the knuckle and the position of your elbow in into the body. Because a lot of people think it, it's just this. yeah. But it, it's so much more upper back uh, tension control. So you're trying to pull not only with your hand and your wrist, your elbow and your lat. So you're, it's called like a, a, a lat drag, as if we would like a row. But you're trying to maintain the height in your knuckle along with the elbow on the pad, along with your shoulder being high, and at the same time bringing your lap back into almost like contr full contraction sort of thing. So it's a lot of technical. Uh, it's very similar to like all the grip stuff that I've, I, I still do and love doing. But you know the technical thing processes that we do with um, with like, with the deadlift, how many times we've tweaked and, and assessed your deadlift. And, and probably like with Darren when he was <clears throat> doing his Conan's, his fitness levels, and you know he's always been super fit. And with his other bits and pieces, it's all those technicality bits, isn't it? Where your food comes into it and your training and sleep and everything. It's all that, but almost like uh, magnified down into one specific yeah, it area of the body. Small margins where you're about like those small little movements. Yeah, it, 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 it literally is t like um, such small little elevations or, or non positioning of the wrist or the hand and things. Because you all know you're doing exactly the same thing. I know it yeah. sounds daft, yeah. whereas it's just these little tweaks that. Yeah. It's, it's it's mad. It's crazy. Uh, but I, I love it, and I like it because it's so technical. And I like still being able to train, even though you know I've retired from strongman in 2018. Um, I needed some. We all need something, a purpose to train for, um, fitness-wise or just strength or something. So for me to to go into arm wrestling was was it, it went you know like a like a a, a, a well sort of um, a well moved glove. So it, it just felt good, like going from that to. Just to from a strongman, sorry, to arm wrestling. Just it feels good. It's hard work, but I like it. And must be a good base to go in from doing. Strongman. It is good, yeah, because you, you've got that natural strength that we've all had over the years. So, so, it, so the world champion now is Devon. Is that right, Devon? Devon's right. number one, but, but he's going against Levan, who who yeah. was he, he? He tore his forearm a couple of months ago, but yeah. they go for it in. I in think it's not long time, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. going to be interesting. It'll be fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. But I know Devon's. He's had. Has he not had like stem cell and things like he's that? Had stem cell and all, all, all kinds of other bits and pieces. 
He's had lots of injury, but he seems to get get. He, he's quite fit anyway. I mean, he's he's forty. What's Devon now? Forty eight. Yeah. So you know, in 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 sort of athletic style, like, like with rugby, you pretty much be well and truly uh, retired, wouldn't you, boy? Your mid, unless you were playing seniors. Yeah, like mid thirties. Yeah. yeah. So for arm wrestling, there's still guys like um, him, uh, Todd Hutchins, who's sixty plus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you've got um, crazy. There's a guy called is it Crazy Bill? Crazy. Crazy George, a Canadian guy, I think he's in his seventies and still pulls wow. consistently in the competitions. He's still great because, you, as you boys know, your tendons, your ligaments, just sort of yeah. leather, and, and you are physically you know, fit. You can still arm wrestle. There's a guy who uh, I think he wrestled Devon recently. I competed against him in in the world's strongest nation. He was a, he was, I think he was a Russian guy or Ukrainian guy, had massive hands. Yeah, Denis Stepankov. That's him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's um slightly uh, so he was when you knew him, he was big, one forty five, one fifty yeah, kilo guy. He was a good strong man. Yeah, then he had um, a bit of illness. Uh, I think I think he had a, or maybe a car accident or something, and, and sort of backed off it for probably a good ten or fifteen years, and then came back. For mm. fantastically strong, but didn't obviously biggest hands I've ever seen. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean they're Unbelievable. not as big as marks in like size, but thickness. Yeah. Well, you said about Levin when you met Levin. It's like shaking hands with a sofa. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's crazy. So like, his hands are gigantic. Yeah. But his hands are fantastic. But he's still, I mean, unbelievably strong, but I think in someone as prime. He's Georgian. He's, he trains with Janashi, I think. Levin. Yeah, they do. And yeah. Janashi has, has been doing some armistice. Yeah, he's, yeah, back, he's back. You're back actually strongest man, yes. uh, Janashi, this year. So that'll be which is, which is good, because I wouldn't fancy going up against him just yet. No. Because, um, you know, him training with Levin is like having, you know, another, you know, bit onto your training. Yeah. Training with someone as crazy strong as him. Not only in. in in the gym, you know, Levin's still a good 230, 240 bencher. Uh, but some of the stuff he does, just arm wrestling moves, are, are just... That Levin's a big, looks like he's a big lad. He's a me. big dude. What's he, 6'3", 180, 190? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's massive. So a that alone must help a lot, surely. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's, what he's done now, he's, he's dropped a little bit of body weight and worked on his fitness because he was gassed. At some of the super matches, which sometimes are best out of seven, Yeah, it's a lot of energy to expel. So he, he was a little bit sort of uh, fatigued. Last time, so I think he's worked on his fitness, and I think he'll be a better athlete when he well, gets. He said Devon always looks quite fit. He me? always, yeah. 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 I, mean, he's, he's, I think he's got a military background, so he's always quite fit. Yeah. He stays at quite a light body fat. So, um, but he, he's, he's, you can't because he's been doing it, you know, probably th I mean, three decades. I think he's been nearly thirty years. Yeah, his technical ability is, you know, unbelievable. Yeah. Every tiny little, he can read. You know, he's, he's a fantastic athlete. He but, seems to have a lot of confidence now as well. Oh yeah, he's very, very good. Like vocally, that's the only thing that that can annoy people. It, it annoyed Levin last time because his interviews were quite, um, you know, he's quite brash, yeah. you know. And um, but did, did I think he, he, Levin beat him, didn't he? Yeah, ru ru uh, damaged his arm, tore yeah. a, a tendon off in his arm, did he? Because he's just brutal. Is just uh, just the power of the guy, just unbelievable. Going to be interesting to watch that. Yeah, it'll be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd uh, definitely get the old pay per view for that. But um, I think it's normally filmed in. Is it? Uh, is it Turkey or Dubai or somewhere? Oh, okay. I think Larry still does a little bit of it, but uh, Levan will. Well, I hope Levan will become, you know, get the the top spot again. Devon's good, but Levan is just for me just fantastic, just yeah. because of his sheer size. Cool. Well, right, we'll wrap it up then. Thanks, guys, for coming to see Thank us. You. Lovely to be here. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Oh, you're strong as well. Done. It's going to be good.